Hey everybody. So the last video that I posted as far as uh, you know any type of flying or anything was the review on the FMS 1220mm uh, Ranger, which is actually a pretty darn good flying airplane. And that's coming from me, who's not really big into electrics and foamies. Um, it, it was impressive. It flew really well. Um, even if you're an advanced uh, flyer like myself, you can still have a lot of fun with that airplane. So please uh, check out that video if you haven't already. It's not mainly intended for my uh, what I consider my day-to-day -day viewers, because most of you out there are already flying models um, and are looking for you know the next next airplane, next kind of fun thing to play around with. Um, but if you know somebody or know or you've come across somebody who's thinking about getting into the hobby, that's who I made that video for. And that's what I and that's kind of what I told FMS. You know, I was going to be making that video for was for the newcomer into the hobby. Now, since I'm not necessarily a reviewer, I am not in any way sponsored by FMS. Uh, they sent me these airplanes to do an honest review, which uh, will hopefully benefit their business, and I get a couple airplanes to fly. That's a no-brainer for me. Um, however. When they initially asked me for uh, to do the review on the Ranger, I was a little hesitant just because I typically only do any types of video when it comes to reviewing things for things that I'm going to use myself, things that I particularly want. So uh, pretty much what sealed the deal was I agreed I would do the review for the Ranger if they sent me this. Now, I once again, I'm not big into the foam stuff or the electrics, but I've been eyeballing this airplane for a while. And this is the FMS 1700mm Super Cub. And as you can see on the picture on the front, you know, it's, it's totally a, a stole type airplane. Big tires, big flaps, and it comes with floats. So that was the main reason I was looking at it. Um, where I work, I'm pretty fortunate to have a lake. Um, just a few uh, few hundred yards from my uh, my maintenance shop. Um, so this might be something I could take in and uh, play with on my lunch hour. So this review is not going to be as in-depth as the Ranger because uh, even though this model could be used to train, um, that's not really what they're targeting with this airplane. This is a type of plane that for somebody like me who's been flying a long time and just wants something... Uh, something different, uh, something they can uh, fly off water nearby. You don't necessarily have to drive out to a flying field to fly it, but if you do, you still have plenty of fun. And it's 1700 millimeter wingspan, which means it's not very small, and it's still not too big. So if transport is an issue for you, you can still have a decent size, good flying airplane. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to work out fine. So. Um, I was planning on flying this with my FR Sky X18 transmitter, which I will eventually. But I'm going to take advantage of this airplane to test out my X20 Pro. This is the flagship transmitter, top of the line for FR Sky. Um, I've been using the X20 for a couple years and the X18 for about a year. And I recently sold my X20 because I bought the 20 Pro. Now, this is a fantastic radio system. It's quite a bit more expensive than the regular X20 or the X20S or the SE, but you know it's not for everybody. Not everybody needs the bling. I got it just because. Why not? I like radios. For my, you know, all my uh, more common viewers, you should know by now I have a thing with radios. So even uh, long down the line, when this becomes obsolete, it'll be part of my collection. So. I have not used this yet. I got it back in I think January, and right now uh, we're cre we're on the very end of March. It's almost April, so I'll take advantage of this airplane to test out the X20 Pro. Even though I have all the confidence in the world that this is going to work just as good as my other FR Sky equipment. Um, anytime you have a new transmitter. It's usually a good idea to test it on something that's not, uh, 
overly expensive or complex, if you will. Now, and that's not to say it's because I, I'm questioning the quality of the radio. It's just like anything else. I mean, when you go buy a new car, you test drive it first, obviously. You have your mechanic look at it just to make sure. It should be good. Most likely it is, but you want to make sure. Kind of the same thing like that. So this airplane is going to be my test drive for this transmitter. So, um, I am going to pop open the box, give it a quick look over, and uh, while I'm putting it together, if I notice something that's kind of odd or something that I want to change, I'll bring you in and take a look at it. Um, other than that, there's not going to be too much of a build review on this. There's plenty of those already out there on the internet. Um, so it's going to be mainly just a couple little quick shots here and there. And then uh, we're going to go out and fly. So let's have a peek. Okay, so now we got it all taken out of the box. Um, floats, once again, they come with a servo for the water rudder, which is fantastic. Um, I've been uh, warned already by some that uh, uh, probably put some Vaseline on that push rod itself and then put some silicone around where the push rod goes in because uh, a lot of times these, uh, if, these, if these servos get wet, they could, they could fail. So that is something that I am going to do and I would recommend that you do yourself. Uh, landing gear is pretty stout. Of course, it doesn't have the springs on it yet, but they're... <laughs> That is a stout set of landing gear. Wheels are kind of snazzy looking. Not bad. Um, of course, these are the cross uh, uh, bars for the floats right here and the uh, struts for the floats there. Um, main wing tube here, stab tube here. The uh, horizontal stabilizers in two pieces. You can definitely see when you hold up to the light we have a carbon uh, female sleeve on the inside that our joining tube is going to go through, so that's going to be good and strong. I've already checked all the hinging. Looks really good. It's nice and free. No tears, no nothing. So that's good. Uh, the hatch pops right off the front here, just with this little uh, spring-loaded uh, pin. Not bad. Um, I have already taken out the stabilization unit, because I'm not going to be using it for this airplane. This is the Reflex V2. Um, after testing it in the Ranger, it does as advertised. It is a very good stabilization unit if that's something you want to use. Now, since this is something that I'm going to be flying quite a bit you know, for myself, I prefer not to use stabilization, so I will not be using it. Now it comes pre-attached and it's back in here. As you can see, I have my battery pack in here right now. And I tied all the wires up and kind of shoved them back in there so they're out of the way. Um, I've read and watched several reviews on this plane already. And they've stated that uh, they, they kind of seemed a little tail heavy. Now that was mainly with the floats. And running a uh, battery pack that's recommended, which is a 2200, I believe, to a 2600. Uh, four cell pack. This is an Admiral 3000 four cell and I think that should do the trick. Now it might need a little bit more nose weight or a bigger battery when the floats are on there. That is that is pretty typical that when you put floats on an airplane the CG will usually change a little bit but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So I just need to put in my own receiver and once again, I just stuck the battery in there to see how well it will fit. Fits in there good. I'm sure I could put a 4000 in there with no problems. So, yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, one thing I really like, as you can see here, when we look at the wings, you can see the wires for the lights and the servos. They're all in there. Everything is good to go. But no wires popping out. This is commonly used a lot more and more these days. And all those servo wires are hooked up into this big uh, pin type connector here. And when you slide the wings on, it just goes right to these pins right here. So you don't have to undo anything. When you want to pull the wings off, you just pull them off. Now, there's no easy disconnects for this wing. That's a negative for a lot of people. For me, I'm used to flying giant scale airplanes that take forever to assemble and disassemble. Tons of screws, tons of hardware. A lot of hard work, to be honest with you. Um, this requires two screws on each side to hold the wings and one screw on each side for the struts. 
So they do come off, but you know, you gotta put a little bit of effort into it. Now, as far as the wings go, the struts are collapsible. And the jury struts here, they just snap into place. So if you do need to take the wings off the transport, you can pop those out and collapse it. So the wing, so you don't uh, run the chance of actually damaging the struts when you're, you know, stacking the wings or on, you know, stacking the wings up or something. Um, oh, we'll take a break here real quick. In the background, I'm watching uh, my good buddy Michael Bayona. He's uh, lives over in Guam, so he's kind of a, a far away neighbor, and he's. Uh, Covering an old, I believe it's a Great Plains 50cc reactor, and covering with Ultra Coat, and he's uh, kind of sharing my same thoughts on how much he does not care for Ultra Coat, <laughs> but he's doing an impeccable job. I mean, you know, guys like Michael and me, you know, we've been covering for so many years, we can make any covering look good, and boy, oh boy, is he making that look good. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's see where are we at. Not sure what this is for. It comes with a USB uh, cord here. Not sure why. I mean, I'm not going to need it. Uh, the prop that's supplied is a 12 by 75, and that is a pretty stout prop. Really good prop. Uh, of course, comes with a manual. Read it if you desire. A uh, little goodie bag here. We got the spinner. We got some mounting hardware. The uh, springs for the landing gear and the Y harness that needs to be put in if you're going to run the floats. So there's that. Um, yeah, so for right now, um, it's going to be a blink of an eye for you, but it's going to be a little while for me since I don't have my receiver yet, so I can't really set up the plane. I can put it, to, I can put it all together, but I can't set it up yet. So... I'll get this thing all put together. I don't see anything that I'm going to have to change, at least nothing that I see so far. Uh, the only thing I did notice is the vertical fin is a little crooked, but that tends to happen a lot for these foamies um, because these are made, you know, and at least where, where I'm at, they're made in a far away part of the world. These things get shipped all over the world, different climates, you know, temperatures, humidity, all that good stuff. So these foam airplanes have a tendency to twist a little bit, but it's not bad at all. And you can straighten that out pretty easy as well. So I'm going to go ahead and at least just put this thing together so it's all in one piece. And uh, as soon as I get a receiver and can set this thing up, I'll bring you back. Later. Okay, so it took about 30 minutes to put this thing together, and that is including the floats. And I gotta tell you, I am wishing I had the receiver that I needed right now. I mean, I have no shortage of receivers, but not what I need for the transmitter that I want to use. So, crap. And it's a really nice evening, too. But yeah, this thing turned out really well. Um, it's a little chunky. It's not a light airplane, but that's but that's actually beneficial. I mean, it's it's not heavy, but at the same time, it ain't light. Um, the, the spring-loaded landing gear is really, really, um, it's, it's simple, yet functional. Um, I was thinking I might have to crimp these springs a little bit, but I really don't think they're going anywhere. And, um, if they don't suit your purposes as far as the tension on them, and these are just basic springs, you can go to any hardware store, get different, uh, different type springs if you want them to be tighter, looser, whatever the case may be. Um, but they are they are really good. Um, it took a little bit of friction to uh, not friction, but a little bit of force to get the wings to line up to tighten them up. But once again, it's the first time this thing's been put together, so things are going to be a little bit of a tight fit. But as you can see, once it's all together, it it looks really nice, really nice looking airplane. Um, and the floats went together just fine. Once again, everything uh, everything seems. Pretty good, pretty straightforward. Um, I think with the 3000 four cell pack, it should, uh, it, it'll, it'll fly just fine, I can guarantee that. And I think I have it centered on the tray, and I'm pretty sure that's about all I'm really going to need to do to it. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty snazzy looking little airplane. Kind of wish it didn't have as much dihedral, but that is going to help it, uh, 
and it's uh, for stable flying that is um, so it is going to be a really nice flying airplane um, the jury struts here the way they snap in there they have a real positive snap when they go in so you'll trust me when you go to put those in you'll know when they're locked the only thing I'm gonna do which I did on the Rangers you can see where the the wires are kind of poking out a little bit I'm gonna put some tape over the the slots where the wires go in just to make sure they don't pop out of there it's not gonna hurt anything but at the same time I'd rather not have a bunch of wires dangling so now we play the waiting game for the receiver and as soon as I get that I'll uh, I'll get a program to show you how I have it all set up in my transmitter and uh, we'll find a place to fly this sucker all right later okay so I just got my receiver uh, might be kind of hard to see here I'll zoom in on it in a minute this is the uh, FR Sky TDR6 so this is a tandem receiver so we're operating on 2.4 and 900 which is just fantastic I mean probably all the receivers I'll buy from now on for my FR Sky equipment will be the tandem um, the X20 Pro um, you can use all of the receiver protocols on this transmitter and it also has the newest protocol which is twin um, and twin is kind of the same idea of having two receivers basically built into one box but it's twin 2.4 but if I'm gonna have a you know a dual type system for a receiver I like the fact that one's 900 and one's 2.4 that's just that sounds like good redundancy to me so I got this all set up all programmed did not take very long let's get it fired up here welcome to ethos fail safe yep I have not set my fail safe yet so on the screen might be kind of hard to see but I do have a picture of the FMS Cub on there um, yeah why not normally I'm not too big into that kind of stuff but since the feature's there might as well use it now let's fire this thing up And because this is a tandem receiver, the constant flashing blue light means that it's transmitting on both 2.4 and 900. If it was solid green, it means it's still transmitting, but it's not offering telemetry being sent back to the transmitter. So as long as we're flashing blue, we're getting real-time telemetry. And the X20 Pro is all customizable. So I have my real-time um, RSSI readings for the 2.4 and the 900, and uh, yeah, we're running. So the prop is not on there right now, and I have the throttle set up. So the timer works with the throttle, and I have a reset on one of the uh, clicky buttons in the back here. So that's all set up and ready to go, and that's really good stuff. Kind of get a close-up shot of the receiver here it's not very big I still have to figure out how I'm gonna neatly pack it into there but uh, yeah not too bad so as far as the radio setup goes let me orientate this thing different without smacking into too many things turn on the throttle cut even though there's no prop but still I'd rather not have that motor humming away so I've already done a couple basic mixes. So with the ailerons, I'm running just a touch of a rudder mix, just a little. And with the flaps, I have the flaps. I like to have my flaps on the rotary uh, switch here on the side, just because that's more realistic to the full scale. Um, I never much cared for having them on a switch. I like being able to really fine tune it. And I just kind of like that. The very generous flaps I mean that's pretty good stuff and I already put a I think a 20% down elevator mix which might be too much but it's so easy to program that I can take that out if need be but other than that we are ready to go at least I thought I was <laughs> so while putting the once I got everything set up while going to put the prop on um, my He-Man strength took over, and I snapped the prop shaft. Crap. Now, 
most are going to look at that and go, oh, it's a piece of junk, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, when I first got into flying electrics back in, well, actually, back in 1994, but we're not going to go back that far, when I got into the park flyer scene, when uh, the brushless motors and lithium batteries were really kind of the new, latest, and greatest thing, one of the very few motors we could select from was Axie. And those were very, very well-built motors, extremely expensive. I can't begin to tell you how many of these stinking prop shafts I broke on those motors. So I think I just tightened it too much. My bad. So um, I got one on order, should have it pretty soon. Uh, got some pretty nasty weather coming up here anyway, but uh, other than that, uh, it's ready to go. So the next time you see um, this, which will really be in a blink of an eye, um, we'll be out somewhere getting this thing flown. So stay tuned. Hey everybody. So, uh, spoiler alert, I have flown the Cub, um, mainly for uh, testing out my newer transmitter to my uh, FR Sky series, which is the FR Sky X20 Pro. Um, I use this airplane as the test bed and everything has worked out fine. Um, so I wanted to get a few flights on it to kind of get, uh, get the plane set up, kind of get a feel for it before I made a video for you guys. Um, it flies extremely well. Um, it is a little bit of a heavier airplane, but um, it, flies really well. it flies really well. It carries its weight extremely good. Uh, the slow flight is fantastic, extremely aerobatic. Um, I'm running the SMC uh, 4S high voltage packs, the 2800. And to be honest, I'm not too pleased with the high voltage. I think it's a little, there's a little too much hype there. Um, they do have that extra uh, oomph right from the get-go, but they seem to kind of settle pretty quick. Um, so yeah, we're ready to go. Um, let's put this thing in the air, have some fun. Always pre-flight check, always. Okay. Flaps are not necessary for takeoff at all. And for some reason, these, uh, these motors are a little noisy. Very aerobatic. Does not need any kind of mix or anything like that. Really good power. Good vertical. Snap rolls extremely well. Just dump those flaps. Slows right down. Right down to a crawl. Does not really have any bad habits with the flaps down. Do have to keep a little more power on it in the turn and coordinate with rudder. All right. Once again, plenty of power. Snap rolls extremely well. Cubs are notorious to be uh, very well uh, snapping airplanes, if you will. I did move the battery back a little bit from my previous flights. I think I kind of like it. Now this does not have stabilization. I'm not using it. And this is just kind of showing how, uh, how well the airplane does fly without it. It does not need it. Of course, if you want to use it, it uh, does work very well. And when doing snapping maneuvers, um, when you do a snap, when you let off the sticks, it stops, which is uh, pretty surprising because typically these, uh, these high wing type airplanes do not want to stop a snap maneuver on command. And this one actually does very well. Now let's try a knife edge here. Quite a bit of coupling, which can be mixed out, but I'm used to flying without mixes doing the other way here. Once you get used to where you need to hold it, it maintains very well. 
Like I said, very aerobatic. Pull up into some outside snaps here. Outside snaps just as good as upright. Let's give that landing gear a test. We'll kind of thump it down a little bit. At least my version of a hard landing. I have a hard time landing an airplane hard. Yeah, I, I just, I don't like it. But that landing gear is so forgiving. Now this plane will snap uh, basically a high speed stall if you're not careful. So it does act more like a full scale cub in that sense. But it's got plenty of power to be able to stand it up. Like I said that motor's noisy as all heck, but I guess that's normal. Does not have a ton of pull-out power, but once again, I, I am not very impressed with these SMC batteries. At least the high voltage ones. Dump the flaps. Slows right down. Take off the flaps, about four inches is all you need. And for a heavier airplane, it does not fly that heavy. It carries its weight extremely well. Got a little bit of a breeze, not too bad. That was probably the ugliest four point roll I've ever done in my life. I just did a test flight on my scratch built Zeroli Bearcat, so I'm a little, my nerves are a little uh, excited at the moment. So this is kind of my relaxing flight. An inverted flight, you have to hold a little bit of down elevator, not too bad. Very stable, even in the wind we got right now. You give it the power, and it scoots. That thing boogies. Gotta do some graceful aerobatics here. Do some wing over maneuvers. I said, this is just a fun airplane to go up and fly. Hit those flaps, slows it right down to a crawl. Does not need flaps for takeoff. Sounds like somebody just fell over. Nobody's screaming, so I think we're all right. Let's see if we can one wheel this thing. Those big tires, I think they're just gonna grab, but we'll see. Oh yeah. It's harder to do a one wheel anything with these giant tires. And I'm gonna come by for a much better four point roll because that last one was just hideous. That's better. So all the basic maneuvers, it does very well. One of my favorites to do with a Cub is an avalanche, so half a loop, snap at the top, finish the loop. So if you want to fly it like a Cub, you can fly it like a Cub. Do a landing here without flaps. Even without flaps, it slows down really well. My no more fun timer's going off. We're going to ignore it for a minute. So this thing, me, you know, me not being much of an electric guy, this plane is a lot of fun to fly. I can't wait to try it with the floats. Love the way it snaps. Nice little spin. Dump the flaps. Short approach. Slows right down. Testing that landing gear for you. Let's do a nice actual landing here. So we'll do a half flap, half full flaps. I like the way this thing comes in at full flap. This time we'll actually try to do a nice landing. And there we have it. Nice. Okay, throttle kill has been activated. Be surprised how many people get mad about that. Um, 
So, as uh, kind of the to sum up this whole thing, this plane impresses me, and I am a glow and gas guy. Um, this is a lot of fun. Um, does everything as advertised. I like the fact that it's more scale. It doesn't have the uh, a lot of the kind of floaty uh, tendencies of a lot of the lighter weight type airplanes that are this style. This still floats around really good, especially with the flaps that are very generous. But at the same time, it carries its weight really well and you still have to fly the airplane. I wouldn't say this is a beginner model by any means, but if you had somebody that was helping you out, you could definitely learn how to fly on this airplane. And if you were using the reflex stabilization unit, it would be even easier. Um, so that is, that's the FMS 700 or 1700 millimeter Super Cub. Um, definitely a great airplane. If you're a beginner, once again, it's not a bad choice. And if you're somebody that's just looking for something new to play around with, you can't go wrong. Great airplane. Later.